just like to say first that um, thank you very much for joining me tonight. This is a new project for me. I've been working on it now for about three months. Um, it's a bit sort of out there for me because it's not purely about the butterflies and moths. It's all about the streams as well at Westmere. And this is where I do most of my surveys and butterfly recording throughout the year, uh, especially in the spring. Uh, as you can see here is the West Mian Springs, where I do most of my um, recordings. What you'll see throughout the um, uh, tour is the butterflies all, and the moths all come from mostly around this area. Uh, this just actually shows all the chalk streams in the UK. Um, as you can see, most of them are all on the eastern side of the UK, mainly because that's where all the chalk is. And in Hampshire, which is down in the lower part there where the Isle of Wight is, you can see that Hampshire is very gifted with so many chalk streams. That they're all actually covered, coloured in green, well, pretty much all in green, which says they are good chalk streams. Although in the news lately, there's been quite a controversy with the water pools uh, um, polluting these chalk streams. The river that I'm going to be talking about, the River Meehan, is probably one of the better ones. This is another one that I work. This is the River Itchin, which goes into and past um, Winchester. As you can see there, I'm going to be talking about lots of the um, flora and fauna that you see along the riverbank, because without the flora and fauna, you wouldn't get the butterflies and the moths, of course. Again, Rose Bay Willow Herb. Well, this is one of the most common flora that you see along the riverbanks. And I'll be talking about some of the uh, moths that actually lay their eggs on these plants. And here you can see the lots and lots of willow and hazel that actually covers the chalk streams as well. And I shall be talking about some of the moths that actually utilise these trees as well. Now, the River Meehan is about um, 15 to 20 miles long. Um, it starts off where I showed you in that first picture there, near Soberton goes north first and then comes straight down into the Solent. Solent there, as you can see, it's sort of a dog leg shape. This is the main area where I do my surveys, uh, just outside Old Winchester Hill. And then you can see there where the springs are and where the, the river actually starts to go to the north. Uh, as you can see there also is the South Downs Way, which I walk quite often. And a lot of these butterflies and moths are actually found along these um, strips of land. I won't be talking too much about the flora and fauna, but it's always worth a mention that uh, a lot of these um, plants are unique in some of their aspects along chalk streams. But this year, I have noticed that most of the um, meadows in, in where I've been walking have been absolutely chocker with um, flowers because I think the, the meadows this year have been absolutely wonderful. I think it's because of all the rain we've had. Um, as you can see there, top left is... Is oxide daisies, meadow buttercups, and probably one of the most important plants that we get is a devil's bit scabious. As again, here's a typical chalk downland meadow, which I took just, just north of Old Winchester Hill. Lots of hawk bit and devil's bit scabious again. These are all um, uh, food plants for the plants, uh, for the butterflies as well. This is one of our best meadows. I've always wanted to actually put a, a moth trap in this meadow here. This is one of our damp meadows, which actually circumnavigates the um, River Meehan at Soberton. As you can see here, it's absolutely festooned with different plants. I won't name any of them because um, there are too many to mention, really. But as you can see there, this is one of our best meadows in, in Hampshire, I think. Now I'm going to go on to some of the butterflies that we see in the in the spring and summer. The, the herald of the spring is, of course, one of our most common butterflies, which is the brimstone. As you can see, the, the brimstone um, lays its eggs on buckthorn, which is probably one of our most common plants. And this is um, a brimstone here, which I took last year when it was actually frozen solid on a grass stem. It's amazing how these butterflies can actually survive temperatures like, like this but it's not very often you actually see them on a grass stem they're usually hiding in ivy or shrubs and that to keep warm this actual particular butterfly 
on the right hand side here is actually laying her eggs on buckthorn. You can actually see an egg coming out of her abdomen there. I was quite lucky to get this photograph. This, this was taken this spring, actually. Right, the small tortoiseshell is probably one of our most common butterflies. Although this year, I think, oh, I don't know whether anybody has realised that I think it's probably had one of its worst years on record, actually. There was very few records I found anywhere I went this year, and particularly along the River Meon. This is one I took on Hawkbit feeding there. Very, very few um, seen in the spring and very, very, very few um, again seen on a second brood, which normally comes out about August, September. And if they did come out, they automatically went into hibernation quite early um, with just the odd one or two still flying around now. Peacocks, again, were very common. Um, this is one of our most common butterflies, especially in the spring. Another one overwinters. Lays its eggs on nettle, of course, same as the small tortoiseshell. Very distinct butterflies. You can find it absolutely anywhere, really. Very common in gardens, but grassland and woodland is another um, area where you can find them. Very distinct with the four eyes. Another nettle feeder is the comma, another quite common butterfly, but normally only found in ones and twos. Peacocks you normally find, uh, you can find them in groups of three and four, if you've got a buddleia, and you're, you're lucky to see them in, in those sort of numbers. But the comma normally sort of visits your garden, or if you see it out and about, it's normally just the one or two. Um, so it's not, not quite as common as the other Vanessids. One of our loveliest migrants, I think, is the painted lady butterfly, which flies all the way from North Africa or West Africa and flies up through Europe. It's not always the same butterfly that flies from North Africa and then ends up in your garden. It's um, taken about three or four different stages to uh, come through. And this one here I took, obviously, it was a homegrown one because it's in very, very good condition. Uh, normally, the ones that you find that come over from France are normally quite battered and shredded looking, you know. Um, normally lays their eggs on thistles. So um, that's one to look out for when you're out and about, especially looking along the, the riverbanks if you're if you're out and about that way. Now, I don't know whether everybody was um, realised that the butterfly of the year was the Red Admiral. If you didn't see a Red Admiral this year, then you must have been... Um, you must have been living in a cave or something because this was pretty much absolutely everywhere. There was absolutely thousands of them. Every time I went out doing a field trip, we must have counted hundreds going down rides along chalk streams, um, on chalk downland, um, and, and in the garden. Well, it's well, it was they were flying around like confetti. So even on a warm day now, if you've got some buddleia that are, may, may well still be out. Um, you've probably still got some of these red admirals still flying around. They will look quite tatty now, but they will go into hibernation. Um, a couple of months ago, I actually at Farlington Marshland, I actually saw several hundred going back out to sea over the Solent, and they were flying back into France and going back to North Africa. So that was quite an exciting thing to see. Common blue butterfly. Well, this is more of a chalk downland specialist. As you can see there, bottom left is its food plant, the bird's foot trefoil. But you can get them in any grass, and especially um, grassy areas along river banks and things like that, uh, especially if they've got a lot of their food plant and nectaring plants. Very, um, very easy to see, no, normally see in ones and twos, but they can be quite common. Normally found May, June, um, end of August, September time, normally in just two broods. You can be quite lucky to get a third brew if we have a summer a summer like we've had this year. Holly blue, another one in your garden, which is quite common. This is one that I found actually mating in my garden. But these these butterflies, absolutely, you can find actually anywhere. Holly and ivy are normally their food plant, but they can lay their eggs on heather, buddleia, blackberry, and dogwood. Dogwood is quite a common plant on chalk downland. In fact, it can be quite rampant, actually, and overgrow a lot of other plants that uh, are needed for other butterflies' food plants. So when we do do a lot of conservation work, 
dogwood is probably one of the primary primary plants we actually start cutting back on. So holly blues do tend to get sort of savaged a bit with um, eggs and things like that getting disturbed. So uh, again, seen in April and May, August, and late. You usually get a late brood in October. Meadow brown butterfly, um, probably one of our most common butterflies, especially in grassland. Uh, again, found along river banks. Um, uh, can fly in early summer, right through to the first frost of autumn. I've seen them in October and a few late ones in November. But they are multi-brooded. They don't really sort of um, have a sort of sectional brood. They normally have a very early broods and another brood comes along two or three weeks later. And because of the hot weather, they normally have three or four broods throughout the year. Now, this is one that's very distinctive, the marble white. Again, uh, a chalk downland species, but you can see on grassland. Lays its eggs on sheep's fescue and coxfoot and timothy. The female butterflies tend to fly over their food plant and drop the eggs on their food plant. They bomb the, the plant, which is not a very well-known fact. But this is a beautiful black and white checkerboard butterfly, very, very distinct. Small heath, this is a slightly rarer of uh, our commonest grassland species. Can be seen again on chalk downland, but um, if you find them in good numbers, they, you'll normally be on Old Winchester Hill or Beacon Hill and places like that. But you wouldn't find many along the river bank, but um, you just find the odd one or two. But they can, can be seen in damp meadows. And they often lay their eggs on sheep's fescue, which is the same food plant as the silver spotted skipper. This is a very distinct butterfly when you can see it. Um, as you can see, the green hair streak, very heavily, cleverly disguised. Um, very distinct flight. Her hair streaks always fly in a sort of a wavy sort of S-type pattern. Um, when you see it, keep your eyes on it because if you... If you look at it and then take your eyes off it, you'll never find it again because it it's so blends in with the camouflage of the food plant or whatever it's sitting on. Very Catholic in what it lays its eggs on. Um, gorse, bramble and bilberry uh, can lay its eggs on um, trefoils as well. Sometimes you find green hair streaks on chalk downland, uh, well away from the shrubs and that, and they, they're laying their eggs on um, common blue food. I normally find them in hedgerows and normally found end of April, May, and sometimes they fly into June. Now, this is a specialist species, a red data species. Up to about 10 years ago, there was only one major colony in Hampshire, which was on the border of Wiltshire on the army ranges at Shipton Bellinger. Now, there's an awful lot of progress being made on people going out and looking for this butterfly especially along hedgerows where the blackthorn, which is probably one of our most common thickets, when you're out and about in the winter, all those white hedgerows are actually blackthorn that you can see. If you're out and about in the, in the autumn, it's well worth looking for this butterfly because it's been seen now in quite a few different places. Just to give you an example, I found it look, looking at it on Portsdown Hill this year, around the back of the Churchillian pub. I don't know whether anybody knows it, but if you're up on Portsdown Hill looking out, out over the city of Portsmouth, it's well worth going to have a look around the back of Chir the Churchill. And we found uh, a couple of um, lecking trees for the males, which are stood right on the top of the hill. On the left here, we've got the female in, it, in its display, beautiful orange patterning. It's probably our largest hair streak, actually. Um, and the one on the thistle is the male butterfly. Uh, it's a bit more mundane in looks, actually, the male, because they're always battling for territory, so they get a bit tattier quickly. This is These are four eggs that I found um, a few years ago now on Blackthorn. They always lay their eggs on the, the stem between the major part of the Blackthorn twig and the actual stem that comes out where all the um, leaves are. Typical blackthorn thicket at the top right. And this is where we found some of the eggs along the River Meon uh, a few years ago. It's 
they've also been seen a bit further down from Soberton. This is probably now becoming one of our top tasks in Hampshire, looking see if we can actually get to um, see the brown hair streaking even more different um, tetrads. Small copper is a, another butterfly, which is well worth looking out for. A uh, butterfly of typical flowery chalk downland and also meadows. Um, lays its eggs on sorrel, sheep sorrel and wood sorrel. So you can find them in woodland and also on downland. Early spring, midsummer and late autumn in three broods normally. Very distinct. Uh, the female is a lot larger than the male. And there's also a lot of aberrations can be found, but I haven't actually showed them here. But you get a blue spot priority. Looking for the um, eggs is another thing on sorrel. I found them on South Sea Beach. <laughs> there's a, quite a good population on Hailing Island. So they sort of cross the small inlet there and pop themselves onto the South Sea Beach. One of our most uh, red data species, this is the marsh fertility. Uh, you're probably wondering why this one's actually in the list here, but you can find this butterfly almost anywhere. I've, I found it on Chalk Downland on Old Winchester Hill a few years ago, which is not where they'd normally be found, but uh, they do wander in quite, quite long distances. Um, some colonies have been found near the River Mayne, as I say, on Old Winchester Hill. Um, the major colony now is in the North Hampshire, uh, around the Army Ranges at um, Hawley Lake and around there. So it's well worth looking for. And there's also a, a few colonies on the borders with Wiltshire and also Martin Down. Dark Green Fertility is probably one of our most powerful flyers can be seen feeding on thistles in the meadows and on downland. Well worth looking for. I find these on Portsdown Hill, Old Winchester Hill, um, Beacon Hill, which is uh, areas um, which which are frequented by this butterfly. Caterpillars fill up on hairy violets and um, are found on woodland in woodland fringes in and around Winchester as well. It's one of probably our, one of our most common and widespread of our fritillary butterflies. Cloudy yellow, another migrant that we find coming over in, in um, early spring sometimes, if the weather's okay. Um, but mainly it comes over in sort of late August, September and October. Does lay its eggs on lucerne and clovers, and they can overwinter in the, in the mild winters. And that's why we get some very early sightings in the spring. These ones I took um, along the beach in South Sea. That's the first place they hit when they come over from France. I have seen them actually laying their eggs on the beaches and all over, all, all Winchester Hill and in the meadows along the um, River Meon as well. When you've got a camera which has got a high, high shutter speed, it's best to try and take this picture when it's actually trying to fly off. There's not many photographs actually taken with this butterfly with its wings open because they always rest with their wings shut. Coming on to the more common ones now, which you find in meadows. This is the large white, which um, lays its eggs mainly on brassics. Um, if you've got an allotment, you'll find lots of these caterpillars eating your cabbages and things like that. But it's quite common on downland in the um, autumn. So you get an influx from the continent as well. This is the largest of our whites, but I still think it's still quite a beautiful butterfly. Another common butterfly is the small white, um, again seen um, in the spring and in the summer and the large influx again comes over from the continent and bolsters our numbers. And on Old Winchester Hill, when I do a survey there, you can actually count absolutely hundreds there, you know. <clears throat> again, another uh, butterfly that um, lays its eggs on brassicas, uh, cabbages and things like that. Not so common now is the green vein white, which is obviously a white, but it's got these veins on the outer side of their upper wing. Lays its eggs on garlic mustard, jack in the hedge, and watercress. Uh, very similar to the orange tip butterfly, same kind of food plant. Very, very sedentary, normally only see one in ones and twos. And two broods most years, get one in spring and one in the late autumn. Orange tip, probably along with the brimstone, the one I started to talk on, Herald Spring. 
Uh, this is probably one of my favourite butterflies. Flies uh, late April, May and into June. As you see there, the top left, the, uh, the male, and bottom right is the female. It's got the grey uh, tops to the wings, and of course the male has got the orange tips, uh, hence its name. Very easy to find in damp fields and hedgerows and in woodland. Caterpillar feeds on jack in the hedge, garlic mustard and other cru crucifers. If there's a lot of caterpillars been laid and the food plants are quite scarce, they are quite cannibalistic which is something a lot of people don't realise. In fact, the one before this, the green vein white, are cannibalistic as well. That's probably why a lot of the orange tips, there's a lot of eggs laid, but there isn't a lot of adults seen. Uh, you're very lucky if you see more than a dozen at a good site. I find that that's probably pretty much average, but mainly people see them in ones and twos, especially in your garden and along roads and hedgerows and things like that. As I say, flies in late April and early until early June, weather dependent. Skippers are another uh, specialist kind of species, really. You don't normally see these other than on downland and in woodland. You can see them in sort of rough meadow pasture land, but um, they're more of a specialist species on chalk downland and in meadows, more commonly in woodland rides. Uh, I'll be talking about woodland in um, a bit later on. Because a lot of the valleys where the River Mian actually meanders, there's a lot of very, very large woodlands uh, like Breachwood and things like that, which are probably within one and a half, two miles from some of the um, River Mian source. The um, large skipper can be seen from late May right through to mid-July and sometimes into August. Very, very fast flyer. Um, as you can see there, top left, I managed to catch the butterfly actually flying off a grass stem there but normally you see the large skippers feeding up on um, bramble and things like that a smaller version of the large skipper is our small skipper as you can see there uh, feeding on oxford wagwort and you can see there how how long their proboscis is when they're actually settled on top of the flower uh, name implies it's our smallest skipper and if you go into a meadow or into a, uh, a woodland and walk along the ride you can, in very good years, see hundreds of these butterflies, absolutely hundreds. Um, Flower-rich meadows, the, the food plant is Yorkshire Fog, where um, the food plant grows. It's normally on Old Winchester Hill and places like that. The adult can be seen on thistles and ragwort, and normally it comes out sort of at the end of June, July, and can fly well into August in good years. Um, the Essex skipper was probably only found in the um, north and the northeast uh, in and around Norfolk and Essex. But now it's really widespread and has spread pretty much over all of the UK and, and into Ireland as well, I think. But here you can see that the Essex skipper is pretty much sim very similar to the small skipper. But the way you can differentiate from the small skipper, it's got these little black tips to its antennae. Looks like it's been dipped into uh, an inkwell. Again, very, very similar in size to the small skipper. Common, but it's not as common as the small skipper, of course. Um, feeds on Yorkshire fog. If you're doing a, a transect or a count and you find like 100 small skippers, 5% would be Essex skippers. The best way to count Essex skippers, I've always found, is very, very early in the morning when they're roosting up on grass stems. That's the only way I really get a good count of them. But that's the best way I can find to identify them. This is Butzer Hill. Just around the back of this, you can just see in the distance Old Winchester Hill. And beyond that is Beacon Hill. And just behind there is the River Meon. So this is why I've got this um, picture here. Now, some of the specialist species that I've seen on Chalk Downland is Dingy Skipper. Um, this is a species of uh, butterfly that's probably quite common on Chalk Downland. You can find it in woodland as well, but it's quite rare. But on Chalk Downland, it can be seen late spring, early summer. It can be quite common. I've counted them in uh, hundreds on Butzer and um, Old Winchester Hill. Butterfly lays its eggs on horseshoe vetch and trefoils. 
And you can see there, the top left is the male, and on the right is the male and female mating. Obviously, the name implies that it is quite a dingy colour butterfly, but to me, I think it's quite a spectacular butterfly, especially when it's a, a fresh specimen. Um, this female here on the right, as you can see there, is pristine, and I thought, find this still quite beautiful, really, even they are a little brown jobby, as a lot of people say when I'm on my field trips. More glamorous uh, of the two um, smaller species of skippers that we've got is the grizzle skipper, another chessboard patterning on, on the um, upper wing. And on the top left here, you can see the male and female mating doing acrobatics on a bit of Yorkshire fog. The grizzle skipper lays its eggs on wild strawberry, which is quite a common plant you can find on chalk downland. And you can find it in meadows as well. It's not as common as dingy skippers, but it can be found in the Mian Valley quite easily. Um, late April again and into mid-June. So what I failed to mention earlier on the dingy skipper, which was the slide before, you can find it in very good summers as a second generation. But I've normally seen it in just ones and twos. You don't normally see the great numbers that you see in the spring. Now, I'm coordinator for this species, the Duke of Burgundy, and that's a, a red data species. I'm not saying that you can find it along chalk river banks, but I have seen it at Westbury Park, which is uh, renowned for this Duke of Burgundy, and the wet river meal runs right past it. Here we have the male and female Duke of Burgundy actually mating. The butterflies lay their eggs on calcite, which is normally found on chalk downland. Some sites, the cowslip can be quite common, but on other sites, the cowslip is quite rare. In woodland, the, pr the primrose is utilised as uh, the food plant. This butterfly flies from mid to late April through to the first week of June. And in exceptional summers, I've actually seen it uh, as, as a second generation. Um, one year, I was very fortunate to see the butterfly in April, May, June, July and August which is quite unprecedented, really. You know, to see it five months consecutively is quite quite a feat, really. Uh, normally found on north-facing slopes because the cowslips don't tend to wilt and dry out so quickly. Obviously, cowslips on southern slopes do tend to dry out more quickly because they face the sun many more hours than they do on the north-facing slopes. So if you're actually out looking for this butterfly, I do recommend looking on north facing slopes where there's a lot of scrub and, and cowslip. Adonis blue, another specialist species um, found on chalk down and again, um, found on Old Winchester Hill. The male top left is uh, an iridescent metallic blue color where it's got this white panel in and the black, black lines. And the, the top right one is the female, which is, um, I won't say a dingy brown color, but it's when you see this butterfly in the flesh, it certainly isn't dingy at all because it's got all these blue spots in and around its abdomen. And it's also got the orange spots at the bottom as well. Very distinctive butterfly. It can run, it's on some sites in the south of England, you get hundreds and hundreds of these um, uh, butterflies. But we're now finding that um, the, the Adonis blue is now being found on other sites in and around the Meehan Valley. Um, we found it on Portsdown Hill this year, or last year, I think. Um, it's now been found on Oxenbourne Down and on Butser Hill as well. So hopefully we'll find it on other sites as well. Another specialist species, the Silver Spotted Skipper, only found on Chalk Downland. One of my favourite butterflies, definitely. Um, can only be found in late August, September, sometimes into October if the season's quite late. A lovely little skipper, um, very fast flyer, I'll call it a little whizzer. Here you see the male actually feeding on a small scabious plant, uh, very distinct with its little ye white yellow panelling on the underside of the wing. And on the right here is um, one I actually managed to get taking off. The, feeding, the, the female lays its eggs on sheep's fescue found in and around ra uh, rabbit burrows. Um, this is probably my third favourite butterfly. Extremely rare butterfly now in um, Hampshire. I'm calling it a rare butterfly, but it's being found now 
on the Wiltshire Hampshire border in around Shipton Bellinger in very good numbers. It's turning up in certain areas as well. We had it back down at Portsdown Hill, which I was extremely pleased with. We only saw the one, but that's a start. I mean, I used to do a transect on Portsdown Hill and I used to see this butterfly very regularly. Uh, every two or three footfalls, I used to see one. I used to count at least 25 to 30 wall browns in the 80s and the early 90s. For some reason, it disappeared. Um, we did some um, scrub bashing and hedgerow took out some hedgerows and also I think pollution has probably done a lot of damage as well because when you look at the colonies of this butterfly the butterfly seems to frequent areas where there's no pollution where there's no motorways no large-scale housing and um, industry and things like that so that's probably why they're so frequent on the Isle of Wight as you see there it was very common in the 1960s and 1970s probably making inroads to some of its old haunts. Uh, flight time, March, April. Um, that's the, where the first brew comes out. Um, if we have a very good summer, July and August as well. Quite frequently now we're getting partial third broods in October and can go into November if you get a, an Indian summer. Um, top left is the male. You can see the black panelling there on the top four wings. And on the bottom there, the female is quite distinct with no panelling at all, but with the dusty patterning going around the actual top four wing there. And the female is a lot larger than the male, which is something to look out for if you've got two together. The brown argus is another distinct butterfly, very, very distinct flyer, lays its eggs on rock rose, which is quite a common um, plant on their downlands and in uh, and our meadows as well. Lovely little butterfly there, as you can see, it's um, got some beautiful markings with the orange spots, the black spots on the forewings there, and the white um, skirting there. Can be seen in May, June, August, September, and sometimes in October as well. Now, this butterfly here, the Chalk Hill Blue, is probably one of the most common butterflies on Chalk Downland throughout the summer. Spreads quite well. I've seen it on, on normal grassland. Uh, in woodland as well, where they spread out because there's absolutely thousands of these butterflies. Absolutely, the old Winchester Hill in um, late June, early July is actually shimmering with these butterflies. Again, lays its eggs on um, horseshoe vetch, same as the Adonis blue. Powdery blue colour, one of our largest blues, and the female there is a, more of a brownie colour. This again is our Winchester Hill, like the um, uh, other captions that I took. Um, this is where I've seen some of these woodland species, which I'm now going to talk about. In the coombs here, the um, species of butterflies, the woodland butterflies, are quite surprising um, what you find on chalk downland. Speckle wood, that's, that wouldn't be uh, a, um, a very rare butterfly, it's quite common. You can see this anywhere, actually, this butterfly, wherever there's a, a copse or um, hedgerow even. If you've got some areas where there's some dappled sunlight, you'll find this butterfly flying around, normally in twos and threes, uh, very territorial, uh, lays its eggs on grasses, um, not any particular grass, cockfoot normally, one of them. Emerges quite early in the butterfly season, season uh, one of the first butterflies I see, actually, is, Sometimes I'll see this butterfly before the brimstone, actually, which is early March through to late November. They double brooded, treble brooded, quadruple brooded, you know, all depends on what, what the weather's like. One of the very few butterflies which overwinters as an egg or as, an, as a caterpillar. So that's one of the very few that do that. Now, those combs that I was talking about house beautiful butterflies like the silver wash fertility. Silver wash fritillary is our largest fritillary, second only to the dark green in transects. As you can see there, top left is the male and female in um, courtship. The bottom left is the male in actually at rest after chasing this lovely female here, bottom right, which is the Valazina. Now, the Valazina is probably one of our rarest of the silver wash fritillaries. Um, the female is normally a sort of a bronzy colour. The Valazina is a silvery grey colour. They're normally seen in um, 
as I say, on woodland rides. If you see these butterflies, you normally see them flying through the ride, engaged in courtship display. Uh, lays its eggs on oak trunks. Um, the caterpillar will hatch out and then walk walk down the, the oak tree um, and then try and find the common dog violet in the leaf litter. Butterfly is seen again in the late June, July, and can be seen in, into August. Another specialist of woodland is the white admiral. Food plant is the honeysuckle, which is quite a common plant on most of the um, trees in, in woodland. This is a uh, what the patterning underneath the white admiral, as you can see on the left, looking down at me. Um, they feed normally on bramble when they're actually adults. Um, that's how most people see them. And the adult down at the bottom right, this is a very fresh uh, male. As you can see, there's no nicks or cuts out of it. When they're flying around bramble, they get um, in a very tatty state quite quickly. Now, this butterfly can be uh, mistaken for our next species, which I'm going to talk about, which is the purple emperor. Now, the purple emperor can be seen in woodland. This is the male in all its glory with the purple on both wings at rest. Most people see the butterfly flying around, as you can see at the bottom here. This is a male which is on a territory um, hunt for a female. They're more likely to be seen around ash trees because the ash leaves are more open than the oak canopy that um, purple emperors frequent. Flights are normally taken from about 11 o'clock onwards. The butterfly is not common, it's not rare, but if you know where to look, this butterfly will frequent um, certain areas of the woodland, um, especially um, on hilltops in the afternoon. Um, top left here is the female of the species. And again, a fresh male, top right, with its wing pattern, as you can see there. And bottom left is, this was actually taken along the River McMeon. This is a large sallow area. That's the female there, and that's where I took it. Um, she was actually laying eggs on the sallow. So this butterfly definitely frequents this chalk stream. Using these high, high trees, the lecking trees, in the afternoon, the female will sit on a an oak leaf and look at the male sparring above the oak trees. Um, these oak trees can be 50, 60, 70 foot tall and they will do this for hours and hours in the afternoon. And if the female comes through, they'll pair up and go to a, an oak leaf or an oak sprig and sit there for about six or seven hours mating. Again, the butterfly is um, out in normally in mid-June about Midsummer's Day, flies June, July, and into August, if you're lucky. <clears throat> this is the River Mean at uh, Soberton. The um, reason why I put this in is because of the black thorn that we found, the brown hair streak, um, this year and last year. Um, all these hedgerows dotted around have got black thorn, and chances are, if, if you look around them in the winter, you'll probably find the eggs of the brown hair streak. There were the butterflies that I wanted to talk about. Now I want to go out, talk about a few of the moths that we can see along the River Mian and other specialist um, chalk streams. The reason why I got this one in the top left um, is that moths matter. I always find that people, when I'm talking to people out in the field, unless they're actually the expert in the, the field or they want to take an interest in it, they moths aren't the the, um, the interest in, in the field. Um, so I want to try and address that if I can. Of course, I'm only going to be looking at the moths that actually take to the air during daytime flying. Most of the moths, which is 1,940 moths in Hampshire alone. So I can't really talk about all those. So I'll only be talking about uh, eight or nine species, the more common ones. On the right here, we've got the five-spotted burnet moth, which is a specialist species in the in the early spring and midsummer. Uh, as you can see there, the five spots. This is a mating pair, obviously. Found mostly in meadows and on short downland. The angle shades moth. That's the one that's very cleverly camouflaged against um, uh, in flowery meadows. I find these in my garden quite often at rest after flying around at night and very early in the morning. They take refuge on windowsills and things like that. 
And this one I took actually on Old Winchester Hill. Not very easily seen because of the camouflage pattern, but um, very common at, at times. Uh, seen throughout the year, readily comes to light and can be found on walls and sheds at rest. Larva, larva feeds on bed straws and herbaceous plants. Well, a lot of those can be found along chalk streams, so well worth looking out for. Now, this is a specialist species that I find is um, found normally at night in my moth trap, but if you've got the, uh, plants like um, honeysuckle and uh, rose bay willow herb, you'll normally see these um, coming into your garden or seeing them flying around very late in the evening or very early in the morning. But what you will see more, more than likely in the, in the garden is the caterpillar, which is quite a very large caterpillar. If, if you hold your hand out, it'll probably fill up your hand. And it's got a very, very distinct patterning along the outside edge of the caterpillar. And it's got two very, very large black eyes at the opposite end. So if a bird tries to cap hold of it, it will grab the right end of the caterpillar and it'll hopefully escape. But if you do find one of these caterpillars in your garden, if you've got geraniums, they'll eat, eat, eat your geraniums and hopefully pupate in the pot in the garden. And you'll see one of these hopefully in the sort of early to mid summer. A very pink color uh, with swept back wings. If you see it in flight, it's, you won't see the wings because it's a very, very fast flyer. Flies in most summer, uh, summer, August, September, and can be found sometimes at roost on chalk downland. A smaller moth called the small elephant hawk moth is a red data species, which is slightly smaller. I've never actually seen one of these, but they they are slightly smaller, but very, very similar in, in coloration and um, food plants. Oak egg and moth is another moth that I found on Chalk Downland. I saw, saw more of these this year than I've ever seen. Feeds on bilberry, blackthorn, hawthorn, sallow, and other woody plants. So they've got plenty of food plant. Um, I've seen quite a lot of these on ports downhill. Um, when they hatch out, they normally fly in sort of swarms of about a dozen or so. Very rare to see them actually, actually um, alighting on any food plant. But so you can see them when you put out a moth trap early in the morning. They'll be sitting out just outside the moth trap. And this is where I took this on the ferns here. And this is one I disturbed um, when I was actually trying to take some pictures of it, just about to take off with, with its wings open there. Probably one of our most beautiful moths, quite a large moth as well. One generation flying in August and September comes ready to light traps found on the coast in meadows, hedges, and long woodland rides, especially in oak woodland, hence the name. Very approachable when it's um, actually at rest. Garden tiger moth. This was probably one of our most common moths at one time, but for some reason it's um, become quite scarce. If you've got a, a large garden with a, a patch that you leave for herbaceous plants, um, you'll normally find what's known as a woolly bear caterpillar, but it's normally the garden tiger moth. It uses a host of plants. Uh, adult is a night flyer, but can be seen at dawn and dusk. Um, can be found on down, downland and a speciality of riverbanks. So that's one to look out for when you're walking along chalk streams. Uh, this is one I had in my moth trap. It's quite distinct where it's folded its wings down. But this is one which is, I, um, which is a fresh one. You can see how beautiful this moth really is. Probably one of our most beautiful moths that you can find. Blood rain moth. Well, this is actually a chalk stream, well, a, a riverbank speciality, actually. I've never actually seen it anywhere else other than on riverbanks. This is called the blood vein, as you can see why it's got its name, with that red line going across its two wings and the pink coloration on the outside of the wing. A beautiful moth. Very small, um, very fast flyer, not very approachable, very hard to get a photograph of, actually, but likes damp ground, especially where the rivers overflow um, in wet weather. The docks grow quite rampant. It can be seen in among the shrubbery. This is where I found it. Now, this is a speciality of a field trip that I take part in um, during the 
field trip season, I do a field trip for the Emperor Moth. And to my surprise, when I've um, had the Moth Lure, which is a little pink bung that I attach to my camera bag, I've actually attracted this moth in all sorts of different sites now. Um, I always thought it was on heathland, but I've actually seen it on chalk downland now and then in meadows. Um, what I do is I normally have the lure out and I leave it on my camera bag for about three or four months and it still stays quite potent for uh, at least two months. And so I've attracted this moth at all sorts of different places, um, but Butser Hill on, on old Winchester Hill as well. So not only do I f have I found it in the New Forest and in and around Alice Holt Forest, but I've actually seen it on Chalk Downland as well. The actual picture within the picture there is uh, the male coming to my lure in the little sock there on my tripod. So if the first male normally comes up after about 10, 15, 20 minutes, if you leave it out long enough, you'll have about half a dozen to a dozen males. One male or two males will sit still on, on the shrubbery for you to get your pictures, but they think they've caught the female. Um, they are easily fooled. But if you take the lure further away from where you have actually put it out um, and you walk a good distance away, they don't normally fall for it twice. This is a male in close-up, which I had on my camera bag after the lure had been put out. As you can see here, because the heathlands are quite open spaces, they are quite susceptible to um, cold winds. And as you can see here, they're quite, quite furry, so it keeps them quite insulated and warm. And this very, very large antennae, which detects the females well up to... Um, five or six kilometres away, which is quite outstanding, I think. Now, another common uh, moth you can find in meadows is a cinnabar moth. Most people recognise the um, caterpillar, which is orange and black, which is normally found on Oxford ragwort, which is our, its food plant. This is highly poisonous to um, a lot of insects and birds. But as you can see there, the male with its very distinct red underskirt and the red spots and the red line going across the top of the forewings. Ones at, ones at rest and ones when it just landed after flying a good distance from me. Um, again, it lays its eggs on lots of different herbs and shrubs. Found again um, very early in the spring, one of the very first moths I see on Chalk Downland. Now, this is one that I haven't seen for quite some time now, the broad-bordered bee hawk moth. Well worth looking out for because it utilises the devil's bit scabies as a food plant. And when I'm walking along the River Mere and I see devil's bit scabies absolutely everywhere, and I do actually look for this moth, and it's very, very rare. This one was actually taken in France, um, so a bit of artistic licence there, I'm afraid. Because it's so rare, um, I haven't actually taken one in the UK now for about 30-odd years. The photographs I have got uh, were taken in Berkshire. Yeah, it's a red data species, very rare now, and resembles a bumblebee, as you can see. Um, very, very fast flyer. You can't see the wing beats because they're going 10 to the dozen. Larva eat bed straws and honeysuckle. I mean, honeysuckle is quite a common plant, so you'd think this this moth would be more, more common. I think it's more common probably up in Scotland and places like that where there's less uh, pollution. There you can see, as I was talking about earlier on, the meadows this year have been absolutely wonderful with the, um, with the weather we've had. Um, quite hot weather, but we've had a lot of rain as well, which I think the meadows have done exceptionally well. Um, this is obviously all devil's bit scabious. I'll put this in because this is probably where you'd find the broad-bordered bee hawk moth. But this is one I found um, in West Hampshire. I haven't actually seen it along the meadows or along the chalk stream, but it'd be well worth looking out for. Uh, national uh, narrow-bordered bee hawk moth. Again, Devil's Bit Scabus is a food plant. Um, more resident down in the West Country and on Porton Down, as, as you can see there. Flower-rich meadows feeds on bugle, ground ivy and vipers bugloss but it lays its eggs actually on devil's bit scabious. 
when I took this picture, it was just actually just laying in the grass. It was it'd been laying its eggs probably, and it was quite exhausted. So I was quite lucky there. Jersey tiger moth um, again was very common this year. The one on the left is the more of the scarcer of the two. It's got the yellow underskirt, and the one on the right is the more common what everybody normally sees, one with the red underskirt with the zebra patterning on the top. Again, a moment from the continent, quite common in some years. 2022 and 2023, probably the most common um, years. Flies during the day and at night. Hemp, agrimony and nettle are the two food plants that the caterpillars feed on. So it should be quite a common moth over here, really, because that's quite they're quite common plants, especially along hedgerows and roadways and things. Uh, wood tiger moth is a... Um, a specialist species, not seen so much these days, mainly nocturnal, or well, the male is definitely. Females tend to be mainly nocturnal, yellow in colour with the black and white patterning. Um, what I do see more of is the caterpillar. I took these caterpillars on Butzer Hill. There was actually hundreds of them walking around looking for food plants to eat. Herbaceous plants are the main food plant. Very attractive moth found on chalk downland, um, and also in um, hedgerows. This is a, a moth that's quite common in woodland, a speckled yellow, one of the more commoner species. can be quite jittery at times. It's very hard to approach. But as you can see there, there's two distinct patternings there. One's quite a, a spotty, and the other one is more of a blotched pattern colour. These can be quite common at times, so there probably is a subspecies of this uh, moth. Flies actually like a um, butterfly could be mistaken for a brimstone moth as well. Day flyer, larval feed on wood sage, which is another common plant. These are quite common moths that I want to talk about. The yellow shell found on chalk downland, common carpet, the treble bar and the brown silver lines. All these moths are found on in meadows and on chalk downland during the early spring and summer. Other common moths found on chalk downland and, and chalk streams are the six spotted burnet moth, the burnet moth, the silver wire moth, which is a migrant, and the mother Shipton, which is another chalk specialist species. Uh, mother Shipton gets its names from the pattern on its wings as you can see, there is the two patterns on the four wings there. It looks like a witch with its mouth open. The silver Y moth, the top right, has got these two Y spots on the top of its wings. Very fast flyer, can be seen in your garden. I've had them actually laying its eggs on my um, shrubs. The burnet moth is extremely common on chalk downland and in meadows as well. You'll see that along riverbanks, especially the chalk streams. Um, Six-bodied burnet moth, mainly seen late spring, early summer, and flies well into, um, into August. And the burnet companion is another spring specialist, which I see can be confused with the Duke of Burgundy sometimes. Um, when you're out looking for the Duke of Burgundy, you see this fly off and you run after it and you get really disappointed because it's the burnet moth. <laughs> Now, the last but not least is the hummingbird hawk moth. I think the last two years, 2022 and 2023, have probably been its two best years for many years. Um, seen in meadows and long hedgerows, gardens feeding on my buddleia, and uh, on thistles as well. At rest on the left-hand side there is the moth, which is a rather dull grey, but this, I think, comes alive when it starts to fly. With its wings it's a sort of a pinky color and the abdomen is a sort of a bright yellow with black paneling very very fast flyer with its um, uh, um, proboscis feeding on the food plants very powerful flyer uh, such a wonderful sight well worth looking out for they're the moths that i would like to talk about now i'd like to talk about the um, book that um, has come out with butterfly conservation, with all the walks, um, 34 sites, 25 wonderful walks. 
and it specializes on 46 species. So if you've um, got six pounds to spare, please buy one. I'd, um, it all goes to butterfly conservation. And if you're interested in field trips, I'm the field trip coordinator for Hampshire. Please see me or look at my website, which I'm just about to go on to. This is a field trip on Beacon Hill. I'm talking to four or five people there about the silver spotted skipper and where they lay their eggs. But if you're interested in the field trips for butterflies and moss, it's not just all butterflies and moss, it's birds as well, invertebrates. So it's it's well worth um, coming to the field trips and having a good old natter to each other and learning all sorts about different things and flora and fauna. There's my website. There's 91 pages of all my notes and things that I talk about. Uh, the Purple Emperor, I'm coordinator for, for Hampshire, and the Duke of Burgundy. And there's a chalk stream going through Winchester, the River Hamble. And the Duke of Burgundy, the female. And I would just like to say thank you for listening. And happy Christmas to everybody. And don't forget, if you're out and about at night, don't forget to put your moth trap out. Thank you very much.